What are you doing up there? channel what's poppin what's poppin what's poppington if you're new here welcome my name is Breland. make sure you are subscribed to this channel ring the bell that way you don't miss a notification for me and follow me on my social media at breland.hunt happy tuesday welcome back to the vlog today's gonna be fun and interesting y'all it's my last week at the foundation <laughs> i'm like crying on the inside crying 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 and i'm literally sweating because um i've mentioned in previous vlogs before that my fellowship is in two parts the first part of it is with the foundation underneath the center for policy analysis and research and that's the congressional black caucus foundation by the way i'm just saying the foundation <laughs> the foundation um and then the second half of it i will be working on the hill as like their fellow but that basically is like being a staffer on the hill and i had a specific congressional woman who i wanted to be paired with because she is like a very big health giant and i just had a meeting with the team for potential placement so i'm super excited um i'm nervous because i feel like i don't know how it went but i tried to prepare myself as best as possible and i took notes and uh yeah so i guess i'll hear back in a couple of days as to if i will be assigned to them or not because thursday will be our last c party the center for policy analysis and research is called c par right so every thursday we come into the office downtown so we call it a c party this Thursday is our last C party. So I knew that I had to record it for you guys um, as well as this week starting tonight and then tomorrow is the March for Change, which is Marsha Dimes really big advocacy day on the hill. I did it last year and I believe I also filmed it for you all. So I'm excited to film it for you all again this year, especially because it's my second time doing it. I have a better understanding of A, what advocacy is, all things government, legislation and politics, as well as I have a deeper relationship with the people at Marsha Dimes. Ooh, so yeah, that's what's been going on over here that's what you guys can expect in this vlog well as i do have to update you guys because this past weekend i went on my first work trip with the foundation we went to alabama we went to montgomery selma and birmingham for the faith and politics pilgrimage and i filmed some of it for you guys it isn't my best vlog so i'm just gonna go ahead and insert it in here so you guys can kind of see that experience Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. What's poppin', what's poppin', what's poppington? I'm so excited. We're going to Alabama for the Faith and Politics pilgrimage. I told myself that I was going to leave by 7.30. The Uber is called, it is 7.31. If you guys knew, if you guys watched the February 28th community time, you all know that I was so stressed out because I did not complete my draft for my current research project that I'm working on. I'm currently a John R. Lewis Social Justice Research Fellow for 
for health equity with the foundation and that's why I'm going on this trip. Anyway, if you guys saw that video and if you're familiar with the fact that I'm a researcher, so I write research papers all the time. I had a draft due on Monday and it took me forever to complete it. Really wanted to get it done before we left on this trip on Wednesday, so I was up all night. I think I probably submitted it around 5.30 and then I started packing and then I got ready and I got dressed. I packed my toiletries by taking a shower, pack my makeup by doing my makeup, but it's all good. We're all together. Let me show you guys my outfit. We have to travel in like business casual. So, so I'm wearing this really cute blazer. It's from Express. I'm wearing my new Michael Kors bag. These pants I think are from PLT and then these shoes, I think they're from Shein. Here is my luggage. We did a medium bag. It's heavy, but it's medium bag. Then I'm also gonna bring my coat with me. It is so Oh my gosh, I wasn't recording. Anyway, I have to buy an umbrella at the airport, which I need to make my way to now. I will see you guys when we land in Alabama. I don't mind letting you down easy, but just give it time. If it don't hurt now, but just wait. Just so y'all are gonna want a little bit of a voiceover for me, which I feel like I don't even do voiceovers like that anymore, at least not on YouTube. But anyway, let me get into the details of really what this whole weekend was like. So our first thing right off the plane, we went to the Freedom Rides Museum and this was really cool because we got a story time and a Q&A from one of the Freedom Riders, Dr. Lafayette Jr. That was really, really cool. Three times he was saying that you didn't, then you'd be arrested. So we got arrested. And um, so uh, I was in the jail cell. My jail mate was C.T. Vivian. And when they came to get us to take us to uh, our trial, we'd been arrested, but they had to have a trial. So uh, when we got there, uh, when the jailer came to take us, uh, C.T. Vivian told him, said, uh, Wait, we can't go to jail right now. We can't go to the court. We have to finish our puns. Because he and I used to do a lot of puns together, you know. Buses are a-coming, oh yes. Buses are a-coming, buses are a-coming. Let me hear you. Buses are a-coming, oh yes. They're coming into Jackson, oh yes. This next stop, the Harris House, was actually one of my favorites. This entire neighborhood is actually one that MLK used to live in. In particular, Dr. Richard Harris Jr., he was a pharmacist and he owned and operated a drugstore. This basically ended up being a safe space for the Freedom Riders, including John R. Lewis. So they were really great friends with the owners of the house and then the granddaughter and the daughter actually still own the house and they still live in it and they just gave us a tour of it and everything is like the same as it was so that was really really cool now mind y'all this is the faith and politics pilgrimage and we're in alabama okay the south so we went to a lot of churches but this one in particular was the historic bethel baptist church so there was a programming there and then we ended up going to um like this baseball and civil rights movement lunch program and i really loved learning about the history of how baseball players were civil rights activists and how they were some of the first people to kind of like integrate spaces and yeah that was really really cool as well very informative and unique Next up on this day, we went to the 16th Street Baptist Church. This was also really great because we got to hear from civil rights activist, Mrs. Willie King, and she was actually the secretary for Martin Luther King Jr. And she was the one who transcribed his letter in the Birmingham jail. I'd never heard or thought about the story of how obviously he wasn't able to write in jail. So how he wrote on pieces of paper and then he like had to rip them up and she basically had to put it together and then write the letter so she did an amazing job recounting that story this situation right here is also extremely special because i was able to lay a wreath on the memorial for the four girls who were bombed at this church 
All right, y'all, we are ready for day three. The whole entire hotel room is a mess, but I am ready with enough time to go to breakfast before we start our day. Today is Selma Day, so I'm super excited to walk across the bridge and just to see what other things we learn, people we get to speak to, and things we get into. Let's go. The first event for this day was the Williams versus Wallace, John Lewis and King Courthouse program. I thought it was really well done how they use drama and scripts and theater to tell the story of basically how important the judicial system was in moving the civil rights movement forward and how there were some key players like judges, like the one who um, was honored here, who this whole building is honored after, the entire institute, who helped to make these decisions that ultimately gave us more freedom as black people in America. So just to jog your memory, the Edmund Pettus Bridge is where Bloody Sunday happened in Selma. About my relationship with the late Congressman John Lewis. the legacy museum we can't film on the inside so i'll let you guys know what i think afterwards but i heard we're gonna cry because it literally takes you i don't know if you guys can see here from enslavement to incarceration i'm nervous but i'm also excited after the museum we had a dinner program at the montgomery museum of fine arts and brian stevenson the writer of just mercy he was the keynote speaker it was actually really good
Amen, hallelujah. I can't y'all, I've got chicken, ribs, macaroni and cheese, green beans, collard greens, corn and bread, and that wasn't even everything. They had black eyed peas, they had egg feed, all types of things. Let's eat. the trip was really really fun I love going to museums I love learning about black history I feel like I learned a lot I experienced a lot I think it was definitely really impactful to have an experience of walking on the bridge especially same time that it happened 59 years ago I also just really enjoyed meeting people one of the best parts about going on this trip specifically as a John R Lewis fellow was that John Lewis was very well respected in Alabama because he was involved in that community for for his entire life from a young age as an activist all the way up to being a congressman. So being a fellow underneath his legacy, we were treated with so much respect, which was just really kind. I also loved the Southern hospitality. I feel like I haven't been to like the South in a long time. But yeah, being able to talk to different people, literally a part of the movement in their own special ways or descendants of people who were these huge leaders in the movement. I think A, it actually really, speaking of, I will say that's one thing that really made me kind of wake up. Like this stuff did did not happen that long ago. Like the grandchildren of these people are my age or younger. I think it's Bernice King who always posts this around MLK Day where she's like, please don't be posting pictures of my father during his birthday in black and white. Like all these pictures were available in color, you know? And I think that it kind of, gives us this dissonance to think that Jim Crow and the segregation happened a lifetime ago and that it was so long ago. Like he was murdered and he was murdered young, but if he wasn't murdered, he would probably still be alive if not like have recently just passed. But like, you know, people lived to 100, 115, like he could very much so like still be here. Like we are just now getting to the age where some of these people are passing, but we are literally just a step away from them. And that was clear when we were able to speak to literally some of the freedom writers. So I also really enjoyed that aspect of kind of just centering myself in the timeline of, oh, we've actually come really far and not that long of a time. And also this just happened, which means that we can't get comfortable in thinking that things can't quickly shift in a different direction if we don't continue to move the pedestal forward. And I really enjoyed the respect that we received underneath John R. Lewis's name. And although we're not, you know, currently doing sit-ins, freedom rides and things like that ourselves, we're still making a lot of great change as scholar activists. And that just makes me really proud to be a part of this fellowship and to be a part of his legacy. So yes, that's my trip recap. I actually have to get all my pictures together and post it on Instagram today. So if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you follow me. And actually, how about you comment a brown heart underneath that picture to let me know that you watched the vlog. Okay, it's 9.30 now. I'm going to make myself some breakfast and then I'm gonna get to editing my capstone. It's due on Friday along with my capstone presentation. And then I'm also probably gonna have to work on my last draft for my, or is it my second draft? My second draft for my last research project. I think my boss is gonna give me the notes for that today. So I wanna make sure that I am working to finish my capstone stuff. That way when my next thing comes, I'm not like too overwhelmed that I had two things at once. If you guys watch my last vlog, I was just so overwhelmed because I had all these deadlines and I was trying to get it all done before the trip. So although I'm happy that the trip happened and I was able to breathe for the weekend, now I have like a whole bunch of slew of deadlines as well because I have to get all of this done before I leave the foundation. So this is basically like my finals week. I've got all these assignments and deadlines and things. I think I'm just going to make me some oatmeal and then drink my coffee and get to work. First time she spoke very highly of you. all of my edits for my final capstone presentation. 
and it is 12 30 so and by the way i did end up having a meeting with a brand for a future sponsorship that i have going on on instagram and tiktok and then next i'm going to work on my presentation um, my final capstone presentation and that shouldn't take me too much longer because i really just have to adjust a few things and that's basically already done from what i did in the paper so i'm so happy i'm like doing good on timing i'm about to head downstairs because i did order some groceries so i'm gonna pick those up and then um, i also have to pick up some packages and um once i put those away i think i'll be nice and refresh and i can get back to working Y'all, guess what just came in the mail? I actually completely forgot about this as I was putting away my groceries. I also picked up my towel bar bag. Okay, I know this is a very small <laughs> bag, but the way this thing is just like poop in this thing. Oh my gosh, you guys, my first toffee. I think I gave you guys the background on the last vlog, but I got the pink ballerina. <laughs> She's so cute and tiny. Let's see if she's worth the hype, cause child, the way I have to fight for my life for this Telfar bag, for any Telfar bag, is beyond me. <laughs> okay. She's small, but she's comfy. She fits my phone diagonally. <laughs> At least she's in there. I guess we'll take it. I think it's cute. I was between this one and the other pink color this one has a little bit more of like a sheen to it which i feel like is just a bit unique i also kind of really like these two straps i feel like it's very comfortable most of y'all probably already have a tail far so you're like girl we we know <laughs> we know we know how to tail far is we know how it feels we know whatever whatever but my first tail far glad to add her to the collection since i'm on my no buy so so I legit will not be purchasing anything that I do not need and like need need for the next month or two. We'll see how long I can go. I think I'm going to have one of these factor meals for lunch. I actually haven't gotten factor in a couple of weeks now. They got double the amount that I needed during my fast and they were all like veggie based. So I'm slowly finally going through them and now I have another box. I'm going to continue putting these groceries away. Okay y'all, it's time. I'm doing this for dramatic purposes only, but I started this list in the beginning of the month. And even though it's March now, it does none of your business. I'm crossing out because it's March 5th and my capstone presentation and my final draft submitted yay i really wish that i was done with my third research project because then i would be done with everything but that's the last thing that i have so i have a meeting with my boss at 4 30. um that's also gonna be our closeout meeting which is so sad done with work stuff until that meeting i'm gonna get ready because tonight we have a reception for, for the march for change advocacy hill day with march of dimes since I have to refresh my hair and do my makeup anyway, I'll do that now and I'll film the sponsored content that I just had a meeting for earlier today. I don't have that much time to do all of that. I'll probably just do my hair and my makeup and then it'll be time for my meeting. Okay. I feel like I literally always start off at the desk because that is where I live and breathe sometimes. But I just finished my close out meeting with my director and I am so hungry. I ate lunch but I'm hungry again. I think it's because I tried to eat one of the last vegetarian factor meals that I had. By the way, I was in the middle of doing my hair and then I realized that it was time so like this whole section is not done which is why this looks all puffy and this side looks hopefully a little bit better hopefully a little bit better i basically ate like mushrooms <laughs> for my factor meal and child i am still very hungry i think there'll probably be food because i think this is a reception but you know it's gonna be like finger food so i should high key before i go but i didn't manage my time well at all i thought i was gonna finish my hair before my meeting reception starts at five and it's five now and i have to do my makeup and then get dressed and travel there but I think it is a reception and not like, so I don't think I have to be on time. I'm not quite sure. I'm just so confused. I like thought I had all this time and then next thing I know I'm late. 
I, I can't figure it out. I have an appointment on Friday to get this weave removed. So this is literally the last time that I am touching this hair. I got my little mini flat iron here. I just hope my curls come back because child, I have straightened this hair so many times and I'm not happy about it. Okay, y'all, I just finished getting ready. I want to show you guys my outfit before I head out. I don't know if you can tell, but, um, y'all can't even tell. I think, <laughs> I'm like, this is the fit. All right, let's go. Word, um, that PMDA has passed and the, uh, it was 382, what's the number again? 382 to 12. Three <laughs> Happy Wednesday. It's Hill Day. I am getting ready to call my Uber to go to the hotel where the rest of the March of Dimes or March for Change crew is. Um, most people come from out of state, so they all stay at the hotel. And what I realized from yesterday's reception is that we're doing things differently this year than we did last year, which is perfectly fine, but I just assumed that everything was the same. Like last year, we basically had advocacy training the night before, and then afterwards there was like a couple of hours, and then we had a reception. I didn't end up going to the reception last year because I had been there all day for the advocacy training, and I, was, I didn't feel like going. And so this year, when I saw that there was only the reception I thought oh, okay maybe the advocacy training is going right into the reception because you have to have a training like you know what I'm saying well turns out the advocacy training is this morning at their hotel which is a different hotel than was at last year and it's not on the metro line so I thought about you know taking the metro there because last time when I was at the hotel I ended up getting a ticket from where I was parking that cost me like over $400 because I didn't know that I got it long story but anyway I am ready up and I'm glam and I think I look pretty cute I flexi rotted my hair last night and these curls came out wonky so then I curled them with a curling iron so this side I'm just gonna go in the back because it's a little bit whatever it's also supposed to rain today when I tell you how many times have I said this I'm sick of the rain I'm so sick of it I'm over it like literally God the plants they're good what about your daughter I don't like the rain I was thinking about wearing pink accessories this is giving spring yes it's giving spring forward so of course they told us to wear purple for March of Dimes and this is the only purple professional dress that I have. I think actually the pink coat with it is kind of cute. I wear these Aldo heels when I'm actually on the hill. I'm gonna wear these Steve Madden loafers, which I really just bent up when I traveled. I'm gonna wear these to travel. Should be breakfast there. So I'm literally just going to go off of perfume and vibes. <laughs>
Capitol Hill. I also finished my discipleship class and community time. It is 9.15, which is honestly pretty early because lately community times have been hours long starting at 8 p.m. I'm finishing at 10. I'm tired. I'm very exhausted. Like, I am so, so tired. But it means a lot of human interaction, a lot of walking around, the rain, the all the things. But, um... Just an update, Capitol Hill was great, advocating was great. Um, I really love the affirmations that I received from a lot of people and we also had a lot of really great meetings with people who were already supporting of the bill and really just informing us on other things that um, they are wanting to support or, um, whew, brain, work. Okay, no more talking. I ain't got it in me no more. I'm tired. I'm going to take this makeup off. And um, tomorrow is when I will start working on my second draft for the research paper that I was up until 5 a.m. turning in last week. I finally got my notes back. So I'll work on that tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure I won't have too much time because I'm sure we're going to be talking a lot, recapping the trip, recapping the entire like uh, CPAR or the Center for Policy Analysis and Research Foundation rotation. So I'm pretty sure. Oh, and also we're doing like a lunch. They're providing lunch tomorrow, which I'm super excited about. But I think we're going out to it. So I need to A, make sure I bring an umbrella because I'm so sick and tired of being caught in the rain. And I have an umbrella. I have need somebody else's. Like, you grown woman. Have your own umbrella. Thank you so much. Q, a day in my life going into the office, working at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation and the Center for Policy Analysis and Research. <laughs> Show them that you're my twins, though. <laughs> twins, where have you been? <laughs>
hey y'all so i'm back home from my last day at the foundation and i just wanted to give a quick little i just had something that i was thinking about because i did end up getting to ride my bike i don't think i could talk to you guys but i checked the weather last night and it said it was gonna rain and then i checked the weather this morning because i was like it looks bright and sunny outside and it was 64 degrees today so i rode my bike which i'm really excited about um i was really hot on my way there but i'm glad that i got to ride my bike for the last time again i will probably do it one or two more times but it won't be like i know that i will ride a bike on thursday and so if i never again have the experience of being able like to bike to my workplace then I'm glad that I had it during this time and um, I don't know how much of it I'm going to include but there was this moment where my director had us do like this black girl magic uplifting moment where we each shared just the things that we love about the different girls in our cohort because the NREI the National Racial Equity Initiative like the research fellows are all women and then our director is a woman our VP is a male but um yeah so we w each went and talked about each other and so when it was my turn I was just thinking to myself as I was riding back home like if my life was a book these chapters would be so short because I talk about all the time how my life just looks completely different than it did six months ago and it's completely different than it a year ago like all these people who have a pretty good grasp on who I am like they can speak about obviously the physical things like you know my my beauty and my presence and my fashion style but even just kind of like the character things and I was thinking about back in 2021 I think it was the beginning of 2021 um one of my old pastors my pastor from North Carolina he ended up doing this thing and I, I don't that was when I was taking a six month break from YouTube so I don't think I really vlogged it but I think I may have talked about it on the podcast where there was like this um thing called me factor and we were just going through these really like just deep introspective questions about like who we are and like who we want to be and I just always think about the question of kind of like how do you want to be perceived by people and I think sometimes we're afraid to be like I don't like to be perceived by people or I I, like I don't know if people have actually like really sat down and thought about it and then once I did and I, I kind of already knew and that a it gives me a lot of uh, empathy and or just like grace for other people and just understanding where it's like these are my key pillars like when people say Breland is a b c d like this is what I want them to say and that those probably are not going to be the same words for you and if they were if everybody wanted to be perceived in those same ways and we would all be the same so it really helped me understand who I am and it helped me show up in places and the way that I authentically feel deep down inside and how again I want to be and perceived is not even the fullness of the word it's more so like um I don't know because like I think some people think of it like oh it's branding but it's like I want to be authentically myself mind body and soul like I when I say beauty and brains like I don't want people just to be like, oh like you're super intelligent or you're smart or you have degrees like that's cool but I want people to like I even love how they said like logical or um I'm very introspective like that is a compliment because I don't want to be like quick witted or even just like just saying things off the top of my head without thinking about things. I want people to know that I am intentional because I think that it it breeds like sincerity and that's genuinely like those are the characteristics that I want to embody. And so between that and even like there was this one thing that I learned about myself a couple of years ago, um, kind of like with my mahogany sisters about like how intense my personality can be and how it's a good thing like when I'm in a good mood but when I'm not in a good mood how it cannot be a good thing and how I have to be so careful with that because I am an energy shifter and I learned that about myself and so I'm trying to be very particular about okay I want to be a light in rooms I don't want to be a storm cloud um, and it's really interesting because multiple people said that and so it's just really it's a really interesting like checkpoint to kind of be like, wow, here are these people who I did not know a year from now and they're able to speak on who I am based off of, based off of who they've met and who they've been able to interact with and experience uh, a bit of life with during the season. And I think that everything they said is just, uh, it was just really kind because not only did they notice these things about me that I you know genuinely like it I work on but even some things that I'm like maybe not as aware of but they're still like really nice characteristics and qualities and things so yeah that just made me think like wow now this like foundation research chapter has come to a close and working on the hill is um 
is upon us. I got confirmed for my placement on the Hill. It is. It was my first choice. It was the first person that people recommended to me from the get-go and even like Marcia Dimes yesterday was saying like I hope you get her and so I'm really happy with my placement. I'm not quite sure if that exactly means because like some of us are paired and some of us aren't so some of us are starting next week some of us aren't um but like the state of the union is today so i don't i don't really know i think there's a lot of like behind the scenes things going on which is none of my business i hope that i get a week off because i could really utilize getting my life together but if not um as of right now because i'm confirmed on a thursday i have a feeling like i should be prepared to report to the hill on monday so look forward to next week's vlog because yeah, this is literally the close of a chapter and I I feel, you know, very grateful for this experience. I feel grateful for these people. I feel grateful for this community, for this network. Um, I really, I'm just, I, I really am so grateful because a lot of the things that I talked about last year, I talked a lot about building my network and building my tribe. I'm sure, if I would have gotten a regular job, I wouldn't have had the ability to be in network with this many people in different areas of life, like especially everybody, nobody else is in healthcare even if they're interested in like health equity or whatever but you know smart ambitious extremely intelligent uh mission driven focused highly educated <laughs> is that a word but high educated advanced educated <laughs> um like young men and women like i i am just so grateful to god because where else could I have gone? And not even just the people in my cohort who I will continue to have in my network for years to come, but then also like my director, my VP, like I am just so grateful to have built this network because I don't think that there's anything else that I could have done this year to allot me all of the opportunities that this has, like between traveling and research and publications and now even like just the experience of being on the Hill. I don't know what that's gonna mean, but that's for the next chapter for now this chapter was short but it was super sweet and again i'm just i'm just so thankful for it kind of trips me out because i was just saying how six months before this i was literally traveling the world and that was the first time in a long time that i just had a break to be breland and then the six months before that i was literally in a graduate program so i was like you know studying and i was in school and i just can't believe that like i would be studying for an exam right now this time last year and then six months before that i was working at a doctor's office and then six months before that i was was i studying for the mcat or like applying to medical school like what is life and i mention this a lot where it feels like every six months i kind of just do this whole yeah i think i keep mentioning this a lot because it feels like literally every six months i'm starting a whole new chapter and it's all going to make sense like I know that God has a plan and his ways are not my ways. So I'm literally just like, what is, ha what are you doing up there? But it's, I'm just here for the ride <laughs> at the end of the day. And I just think it's all so interesting and unique. And I'm just grateful to be in a good place and to be happy with where I'm at while also contending for more in the next that I have to come. Enough of the sobbiness. While I have you guys here, I'll do a couple of unboxings from oh. Black Girl Vitamins. Have you guys heard of them? I think I saw them on Instagram and they reached out to me to send me some stuff. Ooh, I cannot wait to read this. They have this thing called an energy bundle and then one for increased optimal focus. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Okay, let me see which packet I got. Oh, a handwritten note. I love handwritten notes. Freeland, thank you for all your support. We hope you enjoy our vitamins. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Okay, so I got the hair, skin, and nails as well as the vitamin D vitamins. This is what the packaging looks like. Super nice. I'm so happy about the vitamin D. Luckily, daylight savings time is on Sunday. Being a healthy woman isn't about getting on a scale or measuring your waistline. We need to start focusing on what matters, on how we feel, and how we feel about ourselves. Michelle Obama. So here are the two different vitamins. This one is the D3 are the hair skin and nail vitamins so you guys know that i have been drinking my vitamins i've actually been drinking my vitamins every day so i am going to add these to my daily intake i believe this is about a month's supply and i'll let you guys know what i think okay next package that i have here mind you guys i'm on a no buy so i don't want y'all to think that i'm buying things okay i literally just got some dove soap 
and as well as I got my next book, which if you guys watch Community Time, I talked about it yesterday. Fourth <gasps> way! This is my March book. By the time you guys are watching this vlog, since I've been behind on my vlogs, I could possibly be like halfway through or done this book. So make sure you guys are watching Community Time because that's where I do a lot of my book reviews. This one is a thick one. She is 20 hours long. And again, I talk about this on Community Time, but the reason why I decided to skip to this book because I know I had other ones on my TBR, but specifically for March. Again, if you don't know, I listen to my books on audiobook as well as read the physical copy. It just helps with my senses for me to really lock in. With that though, I am purchasing the book twice. So I'm purchasing the audiobook. I do have a subscription with Audible and I'm also purchasing the physical book. And I was like, that's getting like really expensive. So I looked into Libby, which is basically an online library where you connect with your local library and then you can reserve or um, what is it called when you borrow you borrow ebooks audiobook so i decided that i was going to do those for the books on my tbr the only thing is that you can't like get it right away you have to kind of wait in line because it's like a library which again it doesn't make any sense why do i have to wait in line if it's virtual like it's it's an electronic thing like if 30 people want to listen to the ebook at the same time like or the audiobook at the same time you should be able to whatever the point is that i put my name on the list for fourth wing and then like a month or so went by and then i randomly just got a notification like hey you've got the fourth wing audiobooks I was like oh my gosh like let me go ahead order the physical copy I think I got it on Monday and this came last night Wednesday so now I probably have like 17 days to read the book I don't know if I can like re I don't know how it works it's my first time but oh my gosh she is a thick one I'm excited though I've heard good things about it and I'm ready just to like get into a world of a new book I don't know why they put this stupid sticker on this thing this better come off easy oh man this thing is going to leak why would they put a sticker on the front of this book? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? I don't think that I gave Hunger Games the credit that I should for how fun it was to read that book. I think because I just knew that it was going to be good and I expected it to be good that I kind of just took it for granted. But I'm like, no, some of these books out here like are just not good. <laughs> They're not good reads. They don't really engulf you into the world. And so I'm excited to read kind of like a fantasy or like dystopian. I don't even really know what this book is about. Honestly, I don't know. It is a fantasy. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. So anyway, I'll keep you guys updated on this as I read it. I'm actually about to, where's my phone? Chill out on the couch for a little bit. I do want to do a little bit more work on my research because it's due tomorrow and I have my hair appointment tomorrow. So I kind of, let me just bring my laptop over here just so I can at least attempt to do some work. Something is wrong with my remote control. And I don't know what it could be because I literally just changed the batteries. I am about to finish like literally the last 30 minutes of this book. I was listening to it on my ride as well. And um, so hopefully if I can finish this tonight as well as finish my assignment, then this weekend I can start the new book and really get into it because I'll have more time. And this weekend I really just want to like work out I really want to get back into going to the gym and work out since I'll have this weave out I want to like meal prep for the week do some laundry unpack from Alabama like I just feel like my life is in shambles I'm making it through but I want to thrive and not just survive you know you know what I think the best way to do that is to get this research done that way tomorrow I can enjoy my time at the salon because we know we're gonna be watching my show that I like to watch which is called traders <laughs> I'm gonna watch Traders and she's gonna be talking to me the whole time and I won't be able to focus as much as I would like to. So I'm gonna try and get as much done tonight as possible. That way I can either have it submitted tonight and then be free all day Friday or just have to do a little bit at the salon. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.